Hey everyone, it's Zion, and I'm back this week with a quick Yesha Grace guide, giving you a few tips to make your playthrough a little easier and farm as much gold and supplies as you can to help you later in the game. So when playing Yesha Grace, there's obviously a few things you have to keep in mind in order to get through the weeks as smoothly as possible while making decisions which can affect the outcome of the story. One of the things I'm going to talk about first is resources. It can be a little difficult trying to make sure you keep on top of the amount of gold and supplies you have while trying to keep everyone happy and you're especially going to need a good amount of resources later in the game so you have to make sure you're being careful from the start. So in my many playthroughs of Yesha Grace, I started to get an idea of where I should be putting my money and what I really shouldn't be wasting my time with. I'm going to mention some random points in the game, so if you haven't played Yesha Grace yet, then I would not watch this video. First you need to consider where you don't really need to be spending gold and resources. So for example, when you have the different things to buy for Losalia's wedding, I realised that spending my resources on it didn't really make that much of a difference to my playthrough and after that I just ignored all the wedding stuff so I could just save my golden supplies. All that will happen is that the wedding will just be a bit boring and that's it really. And then there's other things which end up being a good investment which you definitely want to go for. At the start of the game, a peasant asks for gold to build an inn. You'll want to go for this as the inn ends up doing well and the peasant starts contributing one gold every week to you. This might not seem like much, but when resources are tight, it definitely makes a difference. You will also get approached by a banker offering a loan from the bank. He tells you how much you can borrow and that you can just pay it back with a bit of interest. However, the first loan is interest free, so what I ended up doing is taking the loan only the first time, because when it was time to pay it back, I already had quite a lot of gold and supplies at that point, so already, so it wasn't really a problem, it's just the extra interest you want to avoid, so I would just take out the loan the first time when it's interest free. Earlier in the game, Lord Etten asks you for help in freeing his daughter who's been captured. Before Lord Etten, a peasant asks you for help in finding his missing son. You can either loan him your general or pay him gold. The peasant doesn't actually want the gold, so you only really have the option of the general, but you don't want to give this to him and you need to send him away because you need to save your general for Lord Etten, as he will pay you a nice amount of gold for helping getting his daughter back. It's little things like this you want to start doing like at the start of the game because as the weeks progress you'll have more and more resources for later when you really need them. There are also decisions in the game that don't directly affect the ending but more just decisions to make from a moral standpoint. So one good example here is the quest to sell paintings to Sir Grego. He wants to buy some paintings that you have and he offers a nice amount of gold for them but you find out from somebody else that he's only buying them so he can burn them. Here you can just confront him about it or just sell the paintings. I personally just sold him the paintings because it was a nice amount of gold he was offering and it was just more useful for me later in the game. There are many instances in the game where sometimes just building up your resources is a lot more useful than just making moral decisions because when it comes to later in the game you're going to need a lot of gold and supplies, especially in the few weeks leading up to the battles so these little things will really make a difference later on. There's obviously a few different endings you can get in this game, so if you've already played through then it's definitely worth playing through it again just to see what you can do differently and if you can save more gold and more supplies and spend it in different places and just seeing the different outcomes that you can get. Alright, so I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys found this video useful. Don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon next to it to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos or any of our giveaways. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.